Okay guys, good morning. Today we are going to talk about the fundamentals of physics of MRI imaging. First, uh, a while ago, some of you asked me to give a presentation about the physics of MRI. Uh, as I was looking through my old stuff and my old files, I found this presentation I made when I was a first year resident, that's in 2006. So I decided to present it again after 12, 13 years, okay? Uh, when I was a first year resident, I was very, very interested in radiology physics in general and MRI physics in particular. So I asked my supervisor to present an MRI physics uh, presentation and he supervised me, he was, he is one of the best human beings I've ever seen. Uh, he's my mentor, my teacher, my supervisor, and my friend, and my big brother, uh, Dr. Professor Dr. Walid Mahavda. Now he's still in the, uh, the head of the department of the radiology uh, in, journal, uh, in Jordan University Hospital. God bless him. Anyway, so I decided to present the seminar as I give it back then. But as I was reviewing it, I found a lot of things that I thought was too complex to present. So I removed some of the slides and some of the images to make it even easier. We'll try to go as slowly as possible just to make it better, okay? First of all, the idea of MRI started to form in 1927-28, in the last century, okay? And research started and the first MRI was in the market at around 1990s, okay? So this beautiful machine took human race about 60-70 years to be functional. A lot of universities, a lot of scientists from all over the world contributed to it. And I think three Nobel Prizes were given to the people who uh, participated in the MRI machine invention. So it is a very complex, very beautiful machine. We need to understand at least partially how does it work. First of all, why do we need to understand the physics of the MRI machine? Because all of the simple concepts must be retained simultaneously in order to apply these concepts for more complicated learning situation. When a patient comes, you need to tell the technician what to do. A lot of different patients come, different conditions, you need to tell him, I want this, I want that, make me this sequence. And you need to know why you are asking for that because it's time, it's money, it's machine being busy. So you need to know what you are doing. First, let's get the technical stuff out of the way. We'll talk briefly about the types of the MRI machine. Basically, we have three types of MRI machines. We have this one, it's called uh, the permanent magnet. You have this one, it's called resistive magnet, and this one, that's called super, uh, sorry, don't have uh, pointer. You have this one, this is the permanent magnet. This one, the superconducting magnet, and this one, the resistive magnet. Now, what's the difference between the all three? First of all, regarding the permanent magnet, this one. It's nowadays very common in this area because it has certain advantages. The permanent magnet, everyone played with a small magnet when you were a children. It's a piece of iron, piece of metal that has magnetism, okay? This is the same thing. It's a big piece of iron that is magnetized. Magnatis, kabir, hadida. Qat'at hadida, magnata, faqat. Okay? The thing about this, the advantages of this, the permanent magnet is that it doesn't need helium. It doesn't need electricity. It works on like eight or 10 amperes, very, very, very low 
energy okay the uh, disadvantages is that you cannot make more than 0.4 tesla the uh, b by the way before we go in the magnetism is measured in tesla okay you measure the distance in meters you measure the weight in grams you measure magnetism with tesla but tesla is a big unit the there is a smaller unit called goes okay so we measure in our field the medical field we measure the magnetism in a unit called tesla and just to know the earth uh, magnetic field the whole planet it's like 0.3 tesla 0.3 okay and the standard mri machines all over the world is around 1.5 tesla so your mri machine is like five six times stronger than the earth it's a huge power okay five times more powerful magnetism than the whole planet okay so this back to our subject this uh, permanent magnet gives you not more than 0.3.4 tesla it is relatively weak magnet uh, it takes a little bit time to make the images more more time and you cannot make like every sequence or everything you, ne you need to do it, you are a little bit limited because the magnetism is low and in the medical field the, the higher the magnet power the better the images and better details and better faster and everything okay so the permanent magnet needs no electricity no cooling system okay but it is low power first and second it's a very very heavy machine this machine weights like 16 17 18 tons and you cannot take it apart you have to transfer it one piece yani 16 ton of metal transferred in one single piece it is very very difficult the second type which is very i didn't see it my whole life till now this is called the resistive magnet i think you know the experiment when you take a nail smart and you put a wire around it and you put it on a battery and it becomes a magnet okay this is the same thing it's a piece of metal with a wire wrapped around it okay and they connect it to the electricity you get a magnetic field okay the advantage is here it gives you a higher tesla power well not very high by, by 0 0.6 0 0.7 tesla but a higher power than the permanent magnet while the disadvantage is is that first it uses a lot of electricity a lot first second it needs a very powerful cooling system because it's become so hot okay the nice thing about this one the resistive magnet is when you go home you just shut it off and that's it magnetism go goes away while on the permanent magnet you cannot turn it off piece of iron magnetized always present magnet okay well here you in the resistive magnet it's electricity dependent power on magnetized power off no magnetism okay till now okay and the most beautiful thing ever our golden standard the superconducting magnet what's the story with the superconducting magnet scientists discovered that there are certain alloys certain materials certain substances okay that when you put it in a very very low temperature the resistance in the matter in the material itself will be zero اي ماده بالعالم اي معدن اي هاي توصل كهرباء بها ريزيستنس there is a resistance in any material okay this resistance will make the electricity goes away مقاومه تمام some materials 
if you put it in a very low temperature about minus 270 celsius <laughs> minus 270 okay the resistance will be zero يعني الكهرباء will be forever the electricity will be forever it will not go, so, go away so how they use that they make a resistive magnet piece of metal with wire wrapped around it from these materials okay and they put the whole thing in liquid nitrogen which is which has a temperature of minus 270 something okay the whole magnet in liquid nitrogen very cold substance تمام حتى الان and they put the with the liquid nitrogen in a sh uh, tank with filled with helium liquid helium which also is a very cold gas so metal nitrogen helium تمام to keep it very cold now what will happen when they put electricity in it the electricity will goes on and on and on and on forever they just put it in the plug put it on electricity will start circling in the wires they take it off the electricity and it will stay there it will not go away forever as long as it is cold okay you get a magnet without electricity with a powerful tesla power there is standard all over the world now it's about 1.5 tesla which is very strong compared to the 0 0.3 0 0.4 0 0.6 0 0.7 it's much stronger okay everyone I, when I was in Zurich University Hospital, research was being done on a 14 Tesla, okay? But the standard, the commercial use is 1.5. Anyway, so electricity will be there forever. Now, if for any reason, temperature start to rise up in the machine, okay? Resistance will start to happen in the wires, okay? The resistance will make heat. Heat will make the gas go away. Gas go away will make more resistance. More resistance means more heat. And heat will make the gas go away. You know this vicious circle. Resistance through, so we heat. Heat يوخر الغاز يزيد resistance. Resistance so we heat. Heat يوخر الغاز and so on. Get it? So within a few seconds, gas go away. Resistance increase. Temperature increase. Gas go away more. There will be like something uh, not explosion uh, very uh, so one of the books called it a very nice show of gas going away from the machine but it's very expensive this thing called quenching okay quenching so when you have a quench you have a disaster you have a machine that is not working anymore it will cost you several thousand dollars to make it work again okay so in order to keep the machine cool you need to fill it with helium every now and then every few months sometimes a year two years anyway every while you need to fill the machine with helium the helium uh, will absorb the heat and evaporate and when it becomes low you fill it again okay now this kind of machines has advantage of giving you a high Tesla power, okay? However, it needs powerful cooling system, it needs helium, and it's closed. It, you cannot get this in an open type. So patients with claustrophobia, they have a problem with that, okay? I think everyone has faced claustrophobic patients they have problem with this machine so you ship them to the permanent magnet it's low power but it is a, an open type the patient is not inside the tunnel okay till now Done. we'll talk later about the types of the surface coils just to know now uh, every imaging you need a coil 
we'll talk about it later in details but just to get it out the, of the way every every imaging brain knee lumbar cervical shoulder whatever you like you need a, a coil to receive the image receive the information okay so there are a lot and a lot of types of surface coils hundreds of types every company makes its own with each one has an advantages and disadvantages just to make you see this is what we mean by a coil this is a brain coil the patient head is here and the whole thing is inside the machine okay this is a flex coil they call it you put it on the wrist on the hand on the shoulder whatever you like and you do the imaging this is a small coil for finger this is a coil for maybe used for abdomen and pelvis and things like that okay different types of coils we'll talk about them in details after a while okay so these are the technical aspects let's say what are the kinds of machines what are these advantages and disadvantages any question till now okay now let's go to the deep things there are some concepts basic concepts that we need to understand in order to know how the MRI works principles okay first of all when an electron flows in a wire it produces a magnetic field that is perpendicular to the wire when you have just a second when you have a wire and there is an electron flowing through it you will have a magnetic field that is perpendicular to the direction of the flow of the electron okay this is a very basic principle when you have electron flowing this way you have a magnetic field perpendicular to the direction of the wire of the electron sorry okay good this is a very this is the basic principle of the MRI the most important thing now we need to, by the way MRI stands for magnetic resonance imaging okay originally when they first invented it the scientific the more scientific name for the MRI was NMR nuclear magnetic resonance NMR okay why they change it because the patients were afraid when you tell a patient راح اسوي لك صوره نوويه مغناطيسيه يتخيل انه يو بلو هيم اب اور كوك هيم اور سمثينج لايك ذات هي رانز اواي سو ذي تشينج ذا نيم انتو ام ار اي بيكوز وين يو تيل ذا بيشنت اي ميك ا نيوكليير ماجناتيك ايميجينج فور يو هيز تيريفايد اوكي حقه يعني حق صراحه اني anyway. سو so, magnetic resonance this resonance word is the key word what do we mean by resonance resonance is an efficient way of transferring or energy okay i can transfer energy in many different ways but the most efficient way that i can give the most energy to something is by giving it in the resonant frequency of that thing what do we mean for example i can talk to you each one on a private on the mri imaging is this an efficient way it's not efficient it's time consuming the more efficient way is to have all of you in the room and talk one time and this will be the more efficient way okay so every material every element has a resonant frequency has a certain frequency if you give the energy in this frequency he will be happy to receive it exactly the tuning fork they use it in the ENT it has a resonant frequency if you hear it give you a certain frequency okay so in the MRI we image the hydrogen and we'll talk about why we do the hydrogen we image the hydrogen protons not electrons protons hydrogen protons so there associate where is the hydrogen in the body fat and water fat contains a lot of hydrogen water contains a lot of hydrogen okay so we image 
the hydrogen. We need to give the resonant frequency of the hydrogen. Okay? So, the hydrogen proton, you know, proton is a positive charged particle. It's like that. It's just a, like a tiny magnet, very small magnet inside the hydrogen. Has a south and north poles, just like a magnet, normal magnet. Okay? So, the main magnetic field, when you put the patient in the gantry, in the machine, what will happen to the magnet if you put a powerful magnet beside it? It will change direction. Come on. The compass, when you put a magnet beside it, it will shift. Sah? Come on. Right? The same thing, the same, exact same idea. When you put the patient, which is like uh, billions and trillions of hydrogen magnets, tiny hydrogen magnets, you put it in the MRI machine, all the protons will shift in the direction of the main magnetic field. Tamam? Now, every one of us has hydrogen atoms. They are distributed in all directions, random. Okay? Put it in the MRI machine, it will be all in the same direction. Now, Just to summarize, there are protons in the body, positively charged, spinning about their axis, act like a tiny magnets. They are randomly oriented. When we place them in the strong magnetic field, they call it the B0, the main magnetic field, B0. Some will align with the direction of the magnetic field. Some will align opposite to the direction of the magnetic field, south and north. But anyway, all of them are in the direction of the magnetic field. Okay? Like this. The magnetic field from many protons will cancel out the, the, with the magnetic field, against the magnetic field, they will cancel each other. The slight excess of the protons that will not be cancelled, yani if we are 20 persons, 8 of us with the magnetic field, 8 of us against the magnetic field, oh, 12 of us with the magnetic field, 8 against, Eight will cancel eight, and we'll have four remaining with the magnetic field. These four that we will use in imaging. تمام شلون؟ إذا عندنا عشرين بروتون حطيناه بالمغناطيس فيلد. فما عش واحد راح with with the magnetic field. ثمانية راح against the magnetic field. الثمانية against راح تأخذ ثمانية with. ويظل عندنا زيادة أربعة. مفهوم؟ These four or this slight excess, this we will use for imaging okay so the net magnetization will be parallel to the magnetic field with the magnetic field okay so for example here before the magnetic field the protons are in all directions randomly distributed okay when you put it in the magnetic field some will be against some will be with the against will cancel the with and the excess we will use it. تمام لهنا. Good. B zero. B هو المغنة ال big one. ال 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 field. Okay. The machine. Till now it's okay. By the way, we need to understand something about the resonant frequency. Resonant frequency. يعني حتى نفهمها بشكل simple. When you give resonant frequency to the material to the patient let's say okay to the atoms of the hydrogen of the patient you will be able to play with the atoms as you like يعني ببساطة. no one is here just your residents no senior no supervisor no ma nothing just the whole bunch of you you'll be talking and chatting and fighting and laughing and do everything randomly and suddenly the head of the department walks in everyone will stop will sit and will listen and he can say you go there you go there you come here everyone will do what he says without discussing why the same thing when there's no resonant frequency 
the protons are talking and fighting and laughing and doing everything and you give the resonant frequency and they will all be habbabin they will all hear what you say you tell them turn to the left turn to the right go up go down they will say okay so the the resonant frequency is the magic you use the magic to control the whole thing okay now we will talk more about it so <clears throat> We need to understand what something called the coordinate system. What do we mean by coordinate system? The direction parallel to the magnetic field is the longitudinal direction. We call it the Z direction. Parallel to them. This is the patient and the machine. Okay. Parallel to the to the magnetic field is the Z direction. Okay. This is the first thing. The plane perpendicular to the magnetic field is the transverse direction. Contains X and Y. So Z, X, Y. Okay? So the X, Y plane is the transverse, or the horizontal. So the patient who is head first supine in a superconducting magnet, the X direction is often chosen to be left to right. And the Y direction chosen to be anterior to posterior. Left to right is the X, anterior to posterior is the Y. So we have, when I say uh, Z, in the Z direction, I mean from longitudinal. When I say X, Y direction, I mean in the transverse plane. X from left to right, Y from anterior to posterior. Okay? This is the coordinating system. Now, again, to notice that, this is the longitudinal, the magnet, the B0. Parallel to it is the Z direction, the longitudinal direction. And you have X and Y direction, the transverse plane. Okay? نعست له بعد يقول ايش هذا يمكن اتس تو هوت مو صح لو انا محتر تمام ناو انذر كونسبت بريسيجن وات دو مين باي بريسيجن ذا بروتونز ان ذا هيدروجين اتوم ذا ار موفينج اراوند يعني اراوند ات سيلف ذا ار موفينج جاست لايك ذات اراوند ات سيلف but not vertically, obliquely. They're moving like that. Okay? This way. This movement is very similar to the, I know the toys, um, we call it Misra'ah, some call it in the Bulbul, some call it Misra'ah, whatever. This game that you throw it away and turns on itself till it falls out. It won't stay vertical, it's oblique. Like this, moves like this, okay? In a certain frequency. Of course, it has, must have the frequency of moving. Tamam? This movement is called precision. Spinning top, this is the game, the child game, spinning top. It moves around itself in an oblique direction. The same thing with the protons. It moves in an oblique direction in a certain frequency, okay? This frequency is the frequency that we use in resonance. The resonance frequency that we control the whole residence here. We just make the head of the department come. Everyone will be good. So the head of the department is the resonance. Okay, don't tell him that. <laughs> so precision makes resonance. Now, what is the precision frequency of the hydrogen atoms? How much is it? There is an equation called Larmor equation. Some stupid guy, scientist from, I don't know, I think France or something, called Larmor, discovered this thing. Okay? Larmor frequency or Larmor equation. The frequency of the precision equals the gyromagnetic ratio by the B0. That means every for example hydrogen we know that it the frequency of it is 42 point something 42.6 megahertz per one tesla yeah if you put it in a magnet that is one tesla power it will move in 42.6 megahertz per tesla okay if you put it in two tesla magnet it will move in 
84 point something double 84 point 85 I think megahertz it will double and you put it in a three Tesla it will triple so you need to have a frequency that is equal to this okay so we know the frequency of precision is the 42.6 megahertz by you get it now one Tesla 1.5 to how much is the power of the magnet okay this is the armor frequency this is the magical frequency <clears throat> so the gyromagnetic ratio is characteristic of each type of nuclei 42.6 is characteristic for hydrogen other element have another precision frequency every element has its own okay good so 42.6 per one tesla per two tesla you multiply it by two per three three tesla you multiply it by three and so on good so MR systems must be shielded from external radio frequency signals. Why? Lazim, Gurfat al MRI, the room of the MRI, there is no radio frequency signals ever inside it. Shielded. Yani, when you go inside, you close the door, your mobile will be zero signal. Your internet will stop. Anything that uses radio frequency will not receive signal why because we detect radio frequency waves if there is external waves it will be detected and will cause noise in the image bad image okay yani if you leave the door open radio frequency will go in from radio waves everywhere okay and you'll have in the image, for example, Michael Jackson, I don't know, Kavam Sar, something it like Hasab Shakuchan Bil Radio Dakil Wakat. Okay? You'll have a noise. How do they shield it? There is a special kind of cage called Faraday's cage. Faraday cage. They just surround the magnet and there will be no radio frequency waves inside. When you go in, you'll be out of service. Your mobile will stop. No signal at all. Okay, so RF energy, radio frequency energy transmitted by an RF transmit coil, which is the body coil usually. The IRF transmit for a short period, it's called the RF pulse. What the machine do, it's give a pulse to the protons and it detects a pulse from the proton. Okay, this talks. Give a pulse, receive a pulse. Give a pulse, receive a pulse. Okay, there. Uh, so the transmitted pulse, the pulse that we give, which is the Larmor frequency, okay? For example, in one Tesla, we give a 42.6 megahertz pulse, and we detect the pulse that's coming back, okay? In order for the resonance to occur, tamam? So you remember the surface coil that I showed you? In fact, it is an antenna. Antenna, Ariel. You still have the pulse that comes the body receives the pulse coming from the body. It's just an area, retina. Okay? Around the part, you with the brain uh, MRI, you put it around the brain, the machine gives the body coil, the big one, gives radio frequency pulse, and the brain will sense back radio frequency pulse. You know, energy cannot be uh, Energy and material doesn't go away and you cannot create it. The Einstein principle. Okay? So when you give an RF pulse, you receive an RF pulse. The machine gives one, the brain sends it back. So how to detect the one that's coming back? By the surface coil. It's just an antenna. Powerful antenna, very sensitive. Okay? Now, we send the signal in Larmor frequency, in the resonant frequency, efficient transfer of energy. The protons will receive it. The protons in our body, in the patient's body, will receive it. What will happen? Since an, it is an efficient transfer of energy, efficient, it is very strong, they will change the direction from 
we said when we put the patient in the machine, the protons will be parallel to the B0, to the, yani you put it's randomly moving and you put it in the machine and it will be parallel to the main magnetic field, okay? You give the RF pulse, they will, all of them will change into horizontal plane. Vertical to the main magnetic field. Instead of being parallel, it will change. Then you stop the RF pulse. Okay? What will happen? Campus, Bausala, you put a magnet beside it. It will change direction. When you remove the magnet, what will happen? It will change back into this usual direction. Tamam? The same thing. Protons, you put them in the machine, they are parallel to the B0. You give the RF pulse, it will shift direction. You remove the RF pulse, they will go back. But when they go back, what will happen? It will give back the RF energy that you give in the beginning. You give it RF, it will give you. I'll take dinar, to take dinar. Okay? This is the idea. So, it is in the z-axis, you give RF pulse, protons will shift into xy plane. You remove the RF pulse, they will go back. لحد الآن سهلة إن شاء الله يعني I hope so now we have a new thing something called the flip angle how much does it change by what angle if the RF pulse rotates the net magnetization in the transverse plane then the RF pulse is a 90 degree pulse you can control how much does it go into the transverse oblique reverse how much Residents with the head of the department here, they will do whatever he say. You can do whatever you like. Put it in a 30 degree angle, 40, 90, 180, as you like. If you turn it into 90, this is 90 degree pulse. If you turn it into 180, this is 180 degree pulse. As you like. Okay, protons are very nice things that you can control. We smile on Kalam. Okay, make the al Khafarat. Okay. So, now, to summarize, longitudinal magnetization, when the patient in the machine, you give a 90 degree RF pulse, rotate the magnetization into transverse plane, 90 degree, in the XY plane, okay? You'll have the, the net magnetization, instead of being parallel to the B0, it will be vertical to the B0, 90 degree, tamam? You stop. The, the longitudinal magnetization will be zero. It will be in the transverse plane, not in the longitudinal plane. Tamam? Then, you st stop the RF pulse, it will start to come back to the main magnetic field. Tamam? So, there will be, this is called the longitudinal relaxation or the T1. The coming back of the, of the protons from the transverse into the longitudinal is this is called the longitudinal relaxation the electrons uh, the protons instead of big tense in the transverse plane under rf pulse control they will grow back so the head of the department goes away here small talk here small talk small talk here a joke here and it will be hosted after a few minutes tamam the same thing. The, the, this is the longitudinal relaxation. The protons, instead of being very transverse, they will go into the longitudinal. Okay? This is the T1. What we call it time one, T1. So, what is T1? What do we mean by T1 and T2? What are these? Yani, shunuha the T1. It is, ahad, and the fikra? Yani, as a definition, what is T1 and T2? Okay, time to what? No. No. T1 and T2 are criteria of an element. يعني, for example, we know boiling water, temperature of water is 100. We know freezing temperature of water is 0. 
we know the weight of for example water is one kilogram per square meter per uh, liter تمام we know the weight of iron is كذا we know the uh, i don't know density of which uh, mercury is this and the t1 of what of hydrogen is this number the t2 of gold for example this number the t1 of uh, of sodium is this number خاصيه من خصائص الماده كل ماده لها خصائص لها درجه غليان درجه تبخر لها وزن وكثافه لها تفاعل مو لها كل ماده لها خصائص هاي بالكيمياء يعني one of the characteristics of material is t1 and t2 ما نستخدمها بالحياه العاديه نستخدمها بالايمجينج اوكي سو وي نو ذا t1 of hydrogen is كذا ذا t2 of hydrogen is كذا It's just a criteria of a material. Okay? How do we define it? What is this criteria? <coughs> it is characteristic of a specific tissue. Depends on the main magnetic strength related to the rate of regrowth of the longitudinal magnetization. How much the mag long time does it take for the long longitudinal magnetization to reach 63% of its original value? Yani. <coughs> the patient in the machine all 100% of protons are in the magnetic field in the longitudinal direction okay كلهم 100% get it now you give the RF pulse all of them the 100 protons are in the transverse plane you remove the pulse they will start to grow back okay When 63% of them is in the longitudinal direction, that's the T1. Okay? You have a hundred residents. The head of the department comes. All of them are quiet. He goes out. Chit chat will start here and there and they talk, talk. When 63% resident is talking, this is the T1 of the residents. Okay? Sahara. Good. <coughs> Now, the net magnetization does not rotate back, but rather increase. يعني هو مو هي تك تك لا it will increase gradually. أول شيء بدها هنا يحكي هنا يحكي هنا يحكي هنا مو all of them start talking at the same time. So when 63%, this is the T1. So again. Definition of T1 is the time that takes for a longitudinal magnetization to reach 63% of its final value, assuming 90 degree pulse. يعني على فرض إنه مطين 90 degree pulse, مو 180, 90. 63% is the T1. Okay, like this, it will grow back gradually. Okay. Now, each tissue of the body has certain T1 time. So you have white matter. has a very short T1 and relaxes rapidly. The white matter of the brain, very short T1, rapidly relax. While the CSF has a long T1, relaxes slowly. Okay? يعني ال CSF من يطلع الهيد اوف ذا ديبارتمنت ورا فترة يلا يبدا يحكي بينما ال white matter لا رأسا Okay? بنات يضحكون يعرفون عليهم الحكي يعني. بنات وايت ماتر والولد سي اس اف خوش اكزامبل ها جراي ماتر هاز انترميديت تي 1 راكس هاد انترميديت ريت سو اف وي وير تو كرييت ان ايمج ات تايم وين ذيس كيرفز ار وايدلي سيبريتد وي ود برودوس ان ايمج ذات هاز ا هاي كونتراست بتوين ذيس تيشوز يعني ات يو ريكورد ذا سيجنال وين موست اوف ذا وايت ماتر از ريلاكسد Most of the CSF is still not relaxed, and most of the gray matter is in between. حتى شنو تسوي the highest maximum possible differentiation يعني فرق. مو you don't record the image when all of them are back or all of them are transverse plane. There's it will be no image. ما تسوي image يعني تجي تعرف منو الحباب منو المحباب. ما تأخذ صورة when the head of the department is here. Everyone is quiet. ولا تأخذها when he's not here. Everyone is talking. تاخذها وين؟ after he goes a while. 
منو اللي راح يحكي منو اللي ما راح يحكي تمام سو ذس كول تي 1 كونتراست تي 1 ويتد كونتراست اوكي ويتد از فيري امبورتنت وورد تي 1 ويتد تي 2 ويتد اي ويل تيل يو واي If we were to create an image with a time where the curves were not widely separated, the image will not have much T1 weighted contrast. Tama? As we agree. For example, here, this is a T1 weighted image of brain. We take it at the time where, not here, not here, we'll take it when the maximum separation of the curves to get the maximum contrast. T1 weighted image. That means we take an image where most of the Protons are going through the T1 phase, and that's why we call it T1 weighted. يعني, as an example, try to imagine. أقول لك روح أخذ صورة لل city center. Take a picture of the city center. قلعة. Okay. I wanted full weighted when the city center is crowded. ازدحام. You go when. You go ساعة 12 الظهر 12 12 1 o'clock in the morning in the afternoon the city center will be crowded okay crowded or full weighted ليش weighted لانه من اقول لك full weighted هي خو مال قلعة يعني او the city center is full full يعني ولا قطرة بها فارغة it has most amount of people يعني تقريبا فول فما هي ولا ولا متر فارغ بها؟ نو واي اي اقول لك تيك ا بيكتشر وير ات از امتي ويتد يو ويل جو تيك ا بيكتشر ات 12 ات نايت مثلا ات ويل بي اولموست امتي نوت امتي امتي نو بيرسون ذير اولموست امتي امتي ويتد اوكي سو يو دو نوت ريبورت اون تي 2 ايميجز ذير ذيس از رونج T2 weighted images. T1 weighted images. One time I was publishing an article and we sent it to, to be reviewed for some journal and we were saying uh, T2, T2 images showed kada, T1 images showed kada, and it was rejected. The cause, the reason for rejection was the reviewer report sent back to us. No self respecting radiologist will say T1 images. Yani, bahdan. You don't say T1 images. You say T1 weighted images. Okay? Because T1 is a criteria of the matter, not of the image. صفة من صفات المادة مو من صفات الصورة. الصورة T1 weighted. المادة T1 image. T1 of the CSF. T1 of the gray matter. T1 of the white matter. Okay? I think we are good now. It's 9 o'clock almost. Okay, so very nice uh, part now. Uh, next time we'll talk about the T2 relaxation and the contrast of the T2. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you use will be and you have some good information from that. Any questions till now?